Bush. Really? So I say Bush, and then Alexa's like, what do you want? What do you want? More. Can I get you another Bush? More beer, please. Farm for Fun episode. This is going to be a fun one to watch Corey in action. He doesn't have anything written down. We're going to wing this one. What do you think? Nice and short and sweet. You think so? This is fun because we got a full room. We can't wait till you guys get to meet all of our guests today. They're all sitting here uh, <laughs> eagerly awaiting the start of this. <laughs> all right, stage is yours. On this early November Farm for Fun show, we're coming at you live with four of the most prestigious people in the tiling industry. If you want to get plowed, you got to talk to these guys. And we are here going to talk to you about a sweet new conference that has never been done before. And we're going to get right into it. So let's go around the room and introduce everyone. Bye bye. Let's start with Justin, and then we'll go left to right. <laughs> left to right as we sit. It's just like a radio announcer of a football yeah, game saying yeah. we're going to be moving. The kick's going to be left to right. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, welcome to the podcast. Justin, kick it off. Thank you. Uh, my name is Justin Brown. Uh, I'm the vice president of Mid-America Trenchers. Uh, we're an uh, uh, Iowa-based uh, company building uh, all sorts of drainage equipment. Um, nice. What else can I tell you? So an Iowa-based trenching equipment. What do you put Correct. water lines in? What do you guys do? Well, we're we're just the equipment manufacturer. Uh, we're not uh, we're not contractors. We don't believe in competing against anybody who's going to be using our equipment. But we build uh, everything from um, we got the whole line. We've got uh, steel track stuff. We got rubber tire stuff. We got self-contained plows. We got wheel machines. We got backfiller stuff. We got pipeline stuff. You name it. Uh, chains. The whole line. Yeah, you literally have it all. We do. Absolutely. Nice. Is that right. what you were expecting, Corey? I mean, you knew who they were, but did you know they had it all? I kind of thought they did. Okay. I mean, that's why they're here, right? They're the, the four most prestigious pipe layers in the industry. <laughs> or they help you lay pipe. Yes. Right? I, I'm a pipe layer facilitator. There we go. There we go. All right, let's, let's continue on. My name is Brad Baker. I am with Springfield Plastics. I live in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, I cover Southeast Iowa and uh, among other territories and other responsibilities. And uh, Springfield Plastics is one of the uh, manufacturers, pipe manufacturers for the Midwest. We cover, you know, like four inch through 48 inch pipe. Um, yeah. So we're talking pipe. But Correct. for some of our listeners that don't understand the terminology pipe, when you say you manufacture pipe, what what specifically, what type of pipe are you talking about? Unspecifically, field tile, drain tile, specifically, uh, three-inch single wall, four-inch single wall through 15-inch uh, through single wall, um, four-inch dual wall through 48-inch dual wall used primarily uh, for agricultural farm drainage purposes. That's nice. good because when I met my wife and I, it was, I don't know, the first year we were out there and I was like, yeah, I got to go lay some tile. And she's like, where? Like, and, and what color, you know, like in whose kitchen? Yeah. So a lot of people don't know that stuff. Yeah. So it's good to know that. All right. Next around the room, still going left to right. My name is Jason Brown. I'm the president and founder of Benaburka Trenchers. As Justin mentioned, we cover the widest arrangement of trenching and tiling equipment in the industry. We uh, produce rubber tired wheel trenchers. We produce steel track wheel trenchers for the pipeline and large uh, drainage district size pipe uh, productions. We also do rubber tired chain machines. We do rubber tired field tile trenchers. We also cover rubber tired and the wide variety of renewable energy trenchers for putting in for your solar, your wind farms. Along with that, we do support equipment from dual wall boots to tile trailers, everything in between. We are one. We are a company that the management have actually been involved in the installation layout and the wide variety of field tiling and all the rest of it due to our uh, uh, lineage, uh, family heritage, as far as being involved with that on the field, which gives us a really great feel for what's going on in the industry. So did you catch that? I think it, he said a double wall boot. Dual wall boot. Dual wall, not a DeWalt boot. Oh. This is not a new boot line. It's not a Milwaukee no. boot. No, this no. isn't something you find at Boot Barn. <laughs> We're still talking field tile. Yes. Thanks for coming in, Jason. And last, but certainly not least. Craig Douglas. Craig. 
live in Monticello, Indiana. Um, I'm the national sales manager for Fratco Incorporated out of Francisville, Indiana. Uh, five plants throughout the Midwest, uh, selling in about 32 states right now. Um, we make three inch through 48 inch in single wall, dual wall, also uh, in HDPE. Also make polypropylene, uh, large presence in the storm water. Uh, drainage pipe and uh, very uh, uh, very motivated and very uh, uh, inundated in the fittings and accessory industry. Corey, who does he remind you of? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't have anything. Who does he remind you of? Your dad. Oh, he does. He yes. Just a little bit. The, I don't, I the don't mannerisms. The I don't see it. And I think that's a compliment speech. to you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, maybe the he's well spoken. But I, I just wanted to say that we had to put put someone in between you guys here because we got a couple competitors in the room, right? They're you guys were natural, at each other's throats. They're natural enemies. Really. Natural <laughs> enemies, and so it must be a big deal why we are here all in the same room to be sitting across the table with with a competitor. So why are we here? Who wants to tackle that? The beer and the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> he flew in to drink some beer and whiskey with the farm profit guys. Brad, yeah, Brad, yeah. why don't you take that? Uh, we are here to talk about the North American Conservation Drainage Expo. Uh, this is an expo. It's about um, uh, the the dream or the vision of it. It's probably about five or six, maybe even seven years old. Um, it, even as competitors, we've talked about this for you know all of our winter conventions and everything that we travel around. But then also other equipment manufacturers, we've talked about this for years about wanting to host. Uh, a really unique event. And so this event is um, going to be in January uh, 17th through 19th, and uh, it will involve uh, all of the pipe manufacturers, uh, or well, several of the pipe manufacturers, all of them from the Midwest, um, and then also uh, pretty much all of the equipment manufacturers that are, whether it's Jason uh, and Justin or their comp competition, will all be involved. We're all going to be there. Uh, but we're also going to be demonstrating things that we've not had the opportunity to demonstrate at other people's conventions. Um, you know, and, and, and it's, you know, it's one of those things where we, we always feel privileged and honored to go to, to other conventions and other uh, events and, and to be able to um, talk to people and everything. But we've always wanted to be able to have our own event and to be able to demonstrate the full offering capacity uh, um, gamut of not just what we have to offer as an individual company or each one of these guys as individual companies, but also what our industry has to offer. And uh, that's really kind of what has spurred all of this on, kind of created this and fueled the fire for us. Uh, we all saw the need for it, which is why we were all willing to um, knock down any kind of barriers to, to work with competition, kind of things like that, and uh, uh, make this happen. And so that's, um, that's why we're here. North American Conservation Drainage Expo. Yeah, the, it's the, a mouthful. The NACD. The NACD. The NACD. NACD. Where's the extra A? Right and. Conservation oh, and Drainage Expo. Yeah, yeah, got so, it. Yeah. NACD. NACD. That's better than NACD. We're going to go like do acne. it. Naked? <laughs> well, I'm not. I'm not, not going to I'm, I'm promote that, but I'm not going to stop it either. Okay. If, if, as we said, uh, all press is good press, Corey. If, well, if you want to make that stand. Right. You guys want to get people there. It might not. We might right? not want to say that. We probably should turn up the heat. You know, we don't <laughs> want it to be cold. <laughs> could, we could change the guest invite list. If that's we should gonna, move it. Move yeah. it from January to July. Maybe. Uh, maybe go. change venues for, for naked. But yeah, the the interesting part about, like you said, you mentioned we have two competitors. We had to stick somebody in between them sitting here in the studio. But we also have uh, two brothers that are split up. So, I mean, <laughs> let, let's go back to the family heritage because, like you said, you're brothers. Also, also right? natural enemies. Let's, right. let's, <laughs> that's right, everyone, natural. Yes. let's acknowledge that. So you are sitting separate for a reason or you guys actually get along in the family business? Yeah, you know, as well as any family business survives. Um, we have our moments, but overall, we still like each other every day. It is it is fairly well a, a testament that we do spend time with each other outside of work, uh, even after all this. Um, I and, and if you really want to get into to, to the family aspect of it, not only do we work together, 
uh, my wife is our office manager, so she deals with, with wow. both of us as well. I'm 18 years into a, a marriage. Uh, I'm going to say that I've been happily married for 18. <laughs> I'm going to say she's coming. probably got four or five, but <laughs> she's dealt with both of us. So yeah. it, it is it is two brothers. We, we do get along quite well, and, and it does come from a, uh, a background of both of us having a vested interest in, in what we do, the business that we're in. Uh, and wanting it to succeed, so yeah, I wondered if that was that comment about marriage was gonna was gonna come about. I mean, my wife brought me beer tonight, so that was she yeah. must, and, I was impressed. We were, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. That that was and that was pretty impressive. Was she pretty told much. me not to share with anybody. Yeah. But, right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and there, I mean, there were several disparaging comments about us made on our way out, but I mean, that's that's only natural. I don't think she, she still said, did it. I don't she think she said it. anything. It was just here. Yeah. Thanks, hon. Appreciate that. <laughs> Is your quota for the night? It was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, a handle I did, of whiskey and a, and a case of beer. I like. did notice that the, there was not it was not a full case of beer, uh, <laughs> so she must be limiting my intake just a little bit. <laughs> I've done my duty. I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to be educational. This I, this event is going to be an opportunity for people to get together, and obviously across the industry network. But then you don't have to be in manufacturing of the product. You don't have to be installing the product. You don't have to be making any of the equipment that is used in this process to get value out of the meeting, right? No. All you really have to do is be involved. Uh, an end user of what we see for conservation, what you see for subsoil water management. Um, with this is, is, are you a farmer? Are you a banker in ag? Are you a land manager? Everybody can benefit from what we're going to teach. You know, years ago, you had NRCS, the local NRCS agent would drive around with the contractor and with the farmer, and they'd start talking about, oh, what we had for programs next year and what we do for fields and uh, headers and waterways would tie into terraces. And with the change, we've kind of lost that. So... This started out with a deal of as how we teach this, how we do this. So we're, in, we're involving the top level educators of the individual fields to come in and start teaching this. We have one education class that's all about what the funding is for the conservation, what the subsoil water management is, all this out of the new climate change bill. You know, is that people don't understand, people don't have access to the knowledge, so we're providing it for everybody. We want everybody to come and learn from this because that's the whole point. You know, this, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this. Obviously, Corey, you and I are going to be a part of this. Yep. I, that's part of the reason of having this show together, but that's not the reason for this conversation. We've developed some new friendships, some new relationships as we've had a couple of meetings, getting ready to prepare for this. Remind our listeners when's it's going to happen again. In January, the week of the 19th. 17th through 19th, yeah. 2023. Okay, so now let's get a little deeper. Let's just have some fun with this episode. We're going to throw some pieces about the event that's coming up in here. Obviously, we know that it's going to be educational. We're going to try and get a bunch of the people that we've had conversations with and had a lot of fun with on the podcast there. I'm not going to call it a, a, a meetup just yet, but that's the goal. It could it's potentially end up being a meetup. Cold January, Des Moines a beautiful place to be. Come in, hang out, have some Centrally drinks. Centrally located. Yeah. The, the skywalks take you everywhere. Court ah, Avenue, yes. plenty, of, yeah. plenty of great places to eat. You come in, you park your truck, you go to the expo, you get in the skywalk. You and stumble you just have a great from time. place to place. <laughs> It'll yeah. be fantastic. Is there going to be beer there? Yes. There will be oh. there, there will, there will There will be access to libations, yes. Okay. And there are some sponsor social hours at the end of the evening, uh, okay. at the end of the expo every day. Yeah. Okay, so this is also an opportunity for those in the industry to get additional training, correct? Is there is there true continuing education credit or just more not, knowledge? Not based? as such, nothing formalized. Uh, there will be a benefit to everyone. So would you say overall, is the industry adequately trained or... Undertrained, overtrained. How do you feel the need is for more? I think that's no, a dangerous question to answer. I, I think yeah. uh, it is, and and I think no matter no matter how well qualified you have any industry, there's always room for more. Mm -hmm. um, I think what we're going to do is honestly take some of the stuffier stuff or the more intellectual stuff and and put it in an environment that it doesn't usually come in. Uh, we're gonna. We're going to give you the opportunity to spend 45 minutes or an hour being very, very intellectual 
and go follow that up with a bush light. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think there's going to be give and take on that. I think you're going to be able to take as much out of it as you're as you want to give. Yeah, and, and I think I and, think, what, and, and I would say we there's some social media si- sites out there dedicated to questions that people either getting involved in tiling or already involved they have questions. Mm-hmm. So they're proposing those on there, and I think it's made us all realize from the res- responses there are some there's a general lack of understanding of what the standards are, okay. uh, uh, and pipe is built to a certain certain standard, installations are a standard. And I'm not sure, judging from what we've read, that people understand that there are standards. So, you know, it gives us a, a platform to put those yeah. standards out there. And, and as an illustration of that, all of the, the pipe companies, for the most part, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, you're the, obviously the experts here, you guys all have certain standards that aren't necessarily always communicated to us as a manufacturer. So this is... It really is a, a, a yeah. first of its kind coming together and let's get everybody the same page. Let's push aside any sort of competition, any sort of this is this industry, this is this, we're separate. We're all the, the one thing. We're all coming together right. here for the betterment of everything. Right. So, so, Corey, not to cut you guys off, but I just, I'm curious now with Corey's opinion, what industry do you think is overtrained? Ooh, I mean, you always see online, it's always agronomy. You think they get too many? I don't think they get too many, but it's probably talked about the most. Yeah? In, in ag. I think it's those people that call that want to sell me solar panels. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. I think they are tr- overtrained to a T because they know if I say no, that leads to this next question. Oh, but you realize that it could cut your energy bill in half. Yeah. You're really not making a payment for this. You're just saving and yep. transferring the check that's your normal energy bill. Yep. You tell them no again, or you hang up, and they know to call you back using a different phone number, asking if you're going to talk to their boss or their rep. Yeah, we did LED lights in the shop like that. My energy bill did not go down. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I thought you were going to say. That's, there you go. That's, that's a little bit of <laughs> Who's undertrained? Who do you think should be more trained? Sometimes I feel like it's the person taking my order at Wendy's. Oh, well, yeah. We could go into a big, long rabbit hole of... Yeah. workers and not wanting to work right now yeah. so <laughs> there's a lot of that yeah. well one of the that's thi- the after after show yeah right, gentlemen? <laughs> well one of the things that with this show is so you know brad and craig compete they both have different takes on pipe so for the education about what goes on with pipe what's the installation is uh why do you see pipe fail the uh dan from the plastic pipes institute is doing the education because he's a neutral party. So with the education, everything is neutral because all of us, our competitors, are promoting, are paying for the show. And as far as the whole, well, why is mine better than yours? That's what the trade show floor is for. But as far as the education, it's just good information. It's very neutral. And then from there, you can take that and figure out where you're going with that based off the trade room floor, who's your favorite salesman is, who's your favorite product line is, all those things. We did not want to get into this, a why is mine better than yours? More of a, here is really good knowledge. And then that's what, that's what we're out for salesmen. You know, that's what the exhibit floor is for. Or, yeah. or the, the local drinking establishments after yeah. the show hours end, we can have those kind of competitions well, as well. We're drinking here now, though. I, want, I do want to know, because I'm a farmer. I mean, I see tile as tile. It's either four inch or it's smooth walled or whatever. It's black and round. And but goes it's in the black, ground. sometimes white. Did you hear how smooth that was? Black and round and what goes to the ground. What is the <laughs> difference? Like, what can you guys tell me the difference in quality on, on stuff? Just, you know, guys don't have to go out of each other's throats, but what is the difference? Well, everybody, I, I mean, I'll just, I'll come out right and say, it. we all build to a certain standard. Yeah. And we're all building. The only thing that could be different really is the weight. As long as you're stamping your pipe to the ASTM standard or the Ashto standard, uh, it all has to be built the same to a, to a to a T, really. And that is audited and it's uh, checked. And but the difference could be the weight. It could be somewhat in the molds. It could be in the manufacturing process. It could be in. There's a lot of things that can vary the quality of title. Hold on, a- ASMT. And AST, ASTM. ASTM and Ashto. 
What does that stand for something? ASHTO is, is anything that would go into a DOT type project. Okay. And then ASTM is just the build specification. They're and we all there's we different all, groups of engineers that yeah. that create standards and, and, and everything for But that, it's good so. to know there are standards. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. So yeah. The only the only thing yeah, um, the only thing I would add is that the, you know it, there are there are some differences in the sense of um, yours is better. <laughs> no, uh, no, it's, it's bigger. just uh, more ribs. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe I'll get a point across. <laughs> no, no, no. We're okay, going to we're we're, we're talk about whose pipe is bigger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously. <laughs> no, uh, all I was going to say is that uh, uh, from one company to the next, that they're they're. Uh, there might be a different profile or something like that, and and that's for um, plastics distribution. Say you have a, a curved profile versus a squared profile versus a round, like an uh, a more rounded profile. Um, some of those are for for different flexibility reasons, for different rigidity reasons, different things like that work better in one conditions versus the other. It doesn't change the fact that, like what Craig was saying, like you know the ASTM says it it needs to be. Um, made within a certain uh, strength capacity, certain flow properties, and it, and it needs to be able to, to meet those standards. So um, different guys have different things that they're used to working with, whether whether it's for flexibility reasons or for, for things like that. So um, that, that was the only thing I would really add to that. So, so it's not like someone's out there claiming they got a six-inch pipe, but it's really like four-and-a-half-inch. No, 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 never like no, that. No, like no, like a lot of... There's a standard might do. Like what, what, so, a, yeah. what a lot of things. What a lot of things come down to, and I'll, I'll say this: whether it's equipment, whether it's pipe, whether it's anything else, personal preference goes a long way in everything. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, we we all know that there are people who take stuff because their local service person is is superior to nothing. I mean, it, it's it it come it really does come down to relationship does go a long way. Relationship, exactly, yeah. Brad. Yeah, we were just talking about combines that way. Yep, same sure. thing. Sometimes the machine itself, and and sometimes it's the service that you've got around you, and what's available. So sorry, I I knew we just <clears throat> actually we just said we weren't going to talk about that, and then I'm like I gotta know now. <laughs> it's like that, like don't push that button. Oh, I'm going to push that button. You got to push it. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> well, let's let's dig a little bit more into the people that are sitting here. Let's start with you, Craig. Craig, is there a family back in Indiana, or you just out here hanging around, flying around? <laughs> no, no, I have family. Uh, I've uh, Three children, uh, all kind of spread throughout the country. One in uh, uh, Portland, Oregon. One in uh, uh, Pensacola, and one in Indianapolis. All have professional careers. My daughter's a nurse practitioner. My son is in uh, commercial electrical sales, and my youngest son is works for uh, as an accountant for Pepsi. Oh, nice! Uh, in the Gatorade division. Um, I grew up right, very close to where we were on a family farm. Um, uh, was an ag teacher for 14 years, worked for the farm credit system for doing uh, finance for large farms for 12 years, and then I've been here 12 years. So I've got a, I, my whole my whole life has been around agriculture. Yeah, I, that was an impressive career. Family farm, education, farm credit. Your favorite. Yep, my favorite. <laughs> and now, now selling tile. Yeah, selling pipe. Yep, that's a unique journey. So, so why? Yeah, why'd you get into selling pipe? You know, I've changed careers three times in my life. Every single time, I knew nothing about moving into that career. It wasn't like I was trained for it, uh, but it's always been a natural progression. So when I went from ag teaching uh, to farm credit, I started financing the the people that went back to the family farms. And at that point, a lot of kids did go back to the family farm, um, and then I had this opportunity. Didn't know much about it. Uh, you know, we were uh, from Indiana, so I didn't even know there was competition when I got into it. I thought, man, what an easy gig this will be. <laughs> you know, there's no competition. But In then I learned, learned quick there's a lot of competition. But uh, then we started bringing in the people that I had taught, I had financed, and then, uh, you know, we grew that, and we kept uh, replicating that model throughout the other states that we, we work in. And then also we, you know, we just got really great people to work with. We're we're celebrating our hundredth year of the anniversary this year. We've been in business a hundred years in Francisville, and uh, that's it's always been family owned, still by the Overmeyer family. So it's just a really good organization 
Uh, so you guys have made plastic pipe for 100 years? Or we made plastic you... pipe from about 6970. And what was it, it was clay that? tile it's, before so that. It was clay. Mm-hmm. So they stayed in the tile. Okay. Yep. So how does that transition work? I mean, there's a lot of companies that this is what we've done and we're always going to do it. All of a sudden, somebody had to be in that boardroom and go, uh, guys, tile, it's changing. We're not, we're not using clay anymore. Well, if Chris Overmeyer was here, and he's just down the road here at the airport, the owner of our company would tell you his grandfather or great-grandfather, um, they were making clay tile. Everything was going good. He called his wife one night and said, hey, I'm not going to be home for dinner. And she goes, oh, is there a problem at the plant? Because they lived right there in Francisville. And uh, she, he goes, no, I am on my way to Germany. And she goes, why? And she, he goes, I'm going to buy one of those plastic tile machines to make plastic tile. And the rumor is she didn't talk to him for a year Whoa. after that. Wow. wow. So that, that plant, actually, that machine went to Illinois, where our St. Anne plant is, and it was Domco at the Domco. time. And actually, Fratco, Domco, and what was the plant with Chatsworth called at that time? Ooh. I can't remember. Fratco, Domco. Anyway, Diller. Ev- Dill- Diller. Yeah, yeah, Diller Tile. Yeah. And every third roll came off was a company's. Huh. Well, that's where, uh, that's where Domco came from, isn't it? Diller, Overmeyer, and Meyer. Uh, Diller, Overmeyer, and Meyer, I think, was Dom Co. Diller, Overmeyer, yeah, and Dom Meyer. Yeah, Dom Co. They were a huge clay factory. Were, yeah. they Sounds like huge. a law firm. It yeah. does. And, and Overmeyer, Overmeyer became Fratco. Diller became yeah. well, well, what's cool. now Prince Guy. I, can, I, history can, of tile. I can tell you that I feel a lot better about a lot of my decisions if his wife didn't talk to him for a year. <laughs> I, I mean, a lot of my stuff seems very trivial in comparison. <laughs> I have heard rumors that the, she was a very strong woman. I never knew her. I, very I strong, that, right? That, very strong. So there might be some truth to that. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Don't get in the way of a frying pan. Maybe he just didn't go home for a year. <laughs> wow. What about you, Brad? What kind of family are you toting around? Uh, I have a wife and an uh, eight-year-old. Uh, sorry, eight eight month old. <laughs> wow. Very wow. different. I was say, time really does fly, <laughs> my <laughs> friend. <laughs> uh, now I have an eight month old uh, son. We're we're in Des Moines. Uh, wife's family from Des Moines. I'm originally from Auburn, Illinois. Okay. Uh, which is just south of Springfield. Um, my father and grandfather actually bought Springfield Plastics along with a group of investors. They bought Springfield Plastics out of bankruptcy. Oh really? So uh, that was in 1978. And they were going to run it for a couple of years, and uh, they were going to sell it. A couple of years after running it was the early 80s. Yeah, farm they, crisis. they didn't think they could sell it, but they were making just enough money to get by. And then, say, five or so years later, they realized, oh, my, maybe we actually could actually just make money on a regular basis in this. And so, what, a, what a wild concept. So, yeah, so... Um, my grandfather was actually in the drainage business at the, in 77, 78, whenever... Um, he didn't want to buy into the business, but uh, the group of investors convinced him to do it. They signed my dad up because he was an accountant and could run the business. Um, and uh, I don't think any of them had any idea like what would be in store for him. And yeah, here we are, roughly 45 years later, um, almost 45 years. And so yeah, it's pretty pretty wild. I'm glad we asked. We never would have known that. No, that's that's interesting. Yeah, who'd have thought we'd have good backstories? And I didn't even think about ag-related products during the farm crisis also took such a hit. Oh, yeah. If they couldn't pay their operating notes, let alone pay the rest of their bills, you guys still couldn't get your product paid for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we kind of already talked a little bit about the Brown Brothers. You guys have long family heritage in the business itself, but are you guys chasing kids around, or are we keeping you away from family? Uh, I have uh, two daughters. Um, I have a 10-year-old and a 5-year-old, um, uh, which not only keep me busy, I, I think uh, Jason has enjoyed his role as the fun uncle. <laughs> yeah, so it's it, better than not being the fun it, uncle. Well, it, basically, if there's a bad influence, I can point fingers at him. So if you want to talk about a reason why we would hate each other, when his oldest daughter was five and a half. Oh, my. I bought a pony for her because, <laughs> you know, our uncles had cattle, had large animals. And, you know, what better way to let them know about their dad's side of the family was is to go to the barn with me. Well, you know, five and a half year olds don't like cows. 
but they like horses. So in fact, this last weekend we were um, we were at horse showing and doing those things. So if Justin has a real reason to hate me, it's because I turned his daughters into horse girls. Right. Uh. Uh, and now my youngest assumes, uh, much like you know, when I was a child, I, I assume that no, every kid at you know X amount of years got their shotgun or or whatever. You know, it was a family tradition. My youngest assumes at some point that there's going to be a pony with a uh, with a bow yes. on it for her. Another uh, horse, which, yes, which she has named and has given me a physical description and a lot of other things. And I'm just going as like, wow, Penelope. Yes, you picked out a very expensive horse. This is going to cost your Uncle Jason a ton. <laughs> <laughs> At least she didn't describe a unicorn. Something oh, no, that you no. couldn't go get. No, actually, that's what she really wants, so it might get yes. a plastic fake horn. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I my see my, my kids are optimistic, to, to say the least. I could see my girls asking for a unicorn. Yes. That's what they would want. Yeah. Oh, no. There's, there's plenty of unicorn and horse memorabilia around my house. <laughs> Uh, growing at an exponential rate. Yes, but the, but the, my youngest niece swears she's going to grow up and build tractors with her dad and Uncle Jason. So you nice. Know, how how can you not um, encourage that? Yeah, yeah. So you guys, it was a family's business. Did you guys always know from the time you were young that you wanted to get into it, or when did that come along? Um, no, it 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 really uh, started out with. Uh, familiarity and, and growing up with it. And I would say at a certain point for me, and I don't know if it, it holds true for Jason or not, but I had looked uh, at the examples of the previous generation said, I'm not going to be involved with this. Um, and at a certain point you realize, no, it's, it's kind of genetic. It's kind of in the blood. And, you know, it's, it's something uh, that, you know, him and I are both, when it comes down to it, especially, you know, with the equipment side of it, we're both fans. Uh, you know, I like to go around and look at uh, even our, our quote-unquote competitors. I, I like to look at their stuff. I'm a big equipment guy. I mean, you turn me loose in a place where I can uh, go see cool stuff, and I, I'm all over it. Um, I like looking at all this stuff. It, it still jazzes me to no extent that um, – we build a product that there is a toy of. We, we, we have a guy who builds these as a scale models for, for toys. Uh, and the fact that um, I can give my, my kids for Christmas scale models of what dad builds in pink, obviously, because why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, and, and the guy who builds them uh, made a special display case for me for the girls. Um, you know, that, that I have a toy now of what we do, kind of our life's work is just... Uh, it's it's unbelievable. It's every kid, little kid's dream come true. So yes, there's three generations of contractor and family history all wrapped up into the. I'm I'm living the dream. I mean, some days it's gigantic pain in the butt. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I got work with my brother. Uh, we fight. Uh, you know, uh, only and, after and, everybody leaves. Right. Night. Exactly. After everybody leaves. Uh, but you know, we we really are living every little kid's dream building big stuff right. well and and for me i mean obviously um every day because of you know my experiences is you know in the 2004 i started back with buckeye and i revitalized their pipeline division so every day somebody goes and fills your tractor with diesel your car with gas from a pipeline that i help tie in an oil well from or a sales line from or things like that I've also been involved with solar farms. So I know that every day that somebody flips on a light switch because of something we did. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done renewal, uh, we've done rural water projects. You know, somebody turns on the faucet. Uh, in 2001, with when I was working for my dad running his, uh, his, machine, his trenching machine and, and some of his stuff is, we did telecommunication projects. So you know, when we were on our cell phones right now is I can show you where there's some fiber optic lines that's carrying from AT&T and all the, all the main players at that vintage. No matter what, our equipment, our guys, our company, we're promoting your life in America. And how can you not get excited about is, is every day there's a cornfield that comes off that turns into ethanol or feeds somebody off of ground that we helped improve off of somebody's life we helped improve. You know, that's living the American dream right there is I know every day that when we get done, all our industry, our company, our guys, our team at the shop right now 
is doing is making a difference in the world. Um, and you can't be asked for anything more than that. So, Corey, that sounds a lot like agriculture. sounds a lot like farming. There's a passion, family generations, it gets passed. It's just in your blood. It's something that you enjoy watching. People watch hours of YouTube videos of other people farming. These guys want to go look at more equipment, which is going to be on hand at, at the event. That's not, right. At Naked. At Naked. <laughs> at Naked. <laughs> but it sounds like it's still way more interesting and way more rewarding than banking. Very much so. Well, it doesn't take much, but yes. Yeah. But I want to know, does your daughter have a pink bush light combine that she gets to play with? It's not a pink one. We do have a scale model of a bush light combine, but it stays in the box. Oh. <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah. Yes. We get to play with that. I only have well, one. To, to, be, to, to be fair, my daughters also have the play shelf. And the look shelf. <laughs> and for them to understand, that's one big step, that there's a difference between the play shelf. Very, very much so. All right, guys, I want to play a game. Usually when we have multiple guests, it's a husband and a wife, and we play the newlywed game, and you got to know stories about each other. Or if we have other people in the room, I, I want to play this or that. Okay. We've gotten in trouble for playing some games that might be a little bit too risky. This one should be a little bit PG-rated. And uh, I feel like it might be a little underkill for this group, but we're going to run with it. So if we'll start off getting personalities here. Uh, we'll go with with uh, Brad to start off with. Crunchy or creamy peanut butter? Creamy. You're wrong. <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to step on anybody's thunder. I just couldn't he didn't, even, he didn't even wait. Justin is creamy. Justin, crunchy. Justin. Crunchy. 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 Oh yeah. Man. Okay. So Justin. What side of the bed do you sleep on? The right. The right. Is he right? Is everybody on the right? Yeah. I'm on the right. I'm on the right. If well, I have my way. How do you look at it, though? Are you standing, standing at, at, the the end, at the foot standing of the, at the, the foot? Yeah. Wait, wait. Is, you're facing the headboard? Yes. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, well, okay. Left. So oh. so, so if, I'm, if I'm standing at the left, foot, left by choice, it's the left. Right by necessity. If, if I'm standing <laughs> at the head of the bed, as is proper, it's the right side. <laughs> Who stands at I've, the head of the bed? How do you stand on the head of the bed? Is the head, of, the head of your bed not against the wall? It is. Well, how do you stand behind it? Well, you don't. There's an orientation. It's, it's more stage left and, and, and true left. Or stage right so, and true right. So if you stand at the foot of the bed, we well, are all okay. left? Okay. If you're yeah. laying on your bed, no, right. if you're laying on your bed, which side are you on? I'm on my right side when I'm laying on my bed. Are you on your stomach or your back? I'm on my back. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so are we all right sleepers except for Brad because he's no. forced to sleep on the left? No. If you're standing at the foot of your bed, you sleep on the right. Yeah, I'm on the right. Yeah, you're on the, the right. Your, unless you're dating a girl who wants you to sleep on the left, and then that's what you I'm, do. I'm, foot, I'm standing at the foot of the bed looking. I am on the left. Yes. Yes. Is so that closest you, to the door? When you're laying on the bed. It's closest to the bathroom. When you're laying on the bed, you're on the right. That's correct. That's yes. correct. Yes. Exactly. That's the only way to do it. Yeah. I Unless don't. I'm really drunk, then I end up upside down. Well, <laughs> when I'm really drunk, I end up on the couch. <laughs> so, I mean, you've got better standards than I do, uh, apparently. Or a more forgiving wife. Oh, I'm in trouble. Now. So <laughs> I've been on both sides of the bed in my relationship, depending on which house we're in. And it depends on which is closer to the door, the door. where an <laughs> intruder would possibly oh. come in. That's that's, that's why the gentleman. That's thing, why I'm. Right? That's why I'm right. not where I would like to be on the bed. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. right. It's because if the um, I got to be closer to the door. Yep. All right, Craig. We got a tough one for you. Which way does the toilet paper go? Does the paper come over the top of the roll, or does the paper go down behind the roll? Behind. Okay. Ooh. What is it in your house? That's why you don't buy from Fratco. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care which way it goes, but I've seen people get all up in arms on social media that it goes over. For me, I just want there to be toilet paper yeah. on the roll. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. Because for me, as long as my girls are putting it back on there, I'm fine with whatever way it comes off the roll. That's a win. Right. I believe if you have small children or cats, it's going to come off the roll no matter what you do. <laughs> it's also fair. Yes. No, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's hit. We haven't done anything with Jason leading the pack yet. We're going to go on a trip. Are we going to a beach or we're going to the mountains? The mountains. Oh, he didn't even hit. That was like he knew I was going to say mountains. Yeah. What if I had said desert? Have you seen his beach bud? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's got, exactly. We're, we're, the, last, the last five years have been rough at work, so kind of kind of lost the gym bod and he, now i'm a mountain bod he's he's the he's got the body for podcasting is that what you're trying to say uh, absolutely 
That's pretty good. Okay, so anybody in the room sleep with noise, or is it dead <laughs> silence? My wife introduced us to a sound machine. Oh, an actual sound machine. Mm-hmm. So a white noise machine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's my it's wife introduced me changer. to a fan. Uh, it, well, we have you have to have both, really. Oh, really? So we've got the ceiling fan on plus a floor a floor fan. That yeah. seems like a yep. lot of work. Yep. Oh, it's a process. No, I'm 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 there with you. There's a ceiling fan. There's a floor fan. Luckily, I'm a CPAP user, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. I put that thing <laughs> on, and that takes it's priority. got its own noise, and <laughs> and I'm. We switch that thing on and I'm out. We got to travel with fans because there might not be a loud enough fan in a hotel room. Uh, really? We got to travel. Or it's intermittent, kicks on and off. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We travel with the sound machine for that reason because yeah. it's the sound machine is it's a steady state noise. It's just a steady state white yeah. noise of, of fuzz, buzz. Craig, whatever. Craig's been quiet over here. I have a feeling he's like blackout curtains, no, no noise. I want the TV on. That's, I oh, sleep really? with the TV on. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I, I kick the TV on so that I can go back to sleep. Oh. I'm the same with him, but my wife won't l- allow that. But I, I do enjoy because it seems like when I hit the bed, my mind's always racing with ideas. And if I could just have the news or something on in the mm-hmm. background, I really don't care about it. T- kind of t- just takes my mind off of it just enough to yep. get to sleep. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I don't mind the fan. I think the biggest benefit we've got from having the white noise is with our kids because they each have a fan, and I feel like now they will sleep through anything. We don't have an issue with thunderstorms. We don't have an issue with. With having a party or playing cards downstairs, it just seems you turn the fan on, they go to sleep, find them in the morning. Oh, I thought that's what melatonin was for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get back into it with more conversations about what we're going to have in January. So remind our listeners again, we'll start with Justin. Where is it and when are they going to be able to get get? Well, well, that's what we should do too is when tickets are available. So start off with what is it again? When's it going to happen, and then how can people find it? So what it is is the North American Conservation and Drainage Expo, the NACADE, not the NACED, the <laughs> NACADE. Um, it is January 17th through 19th, 2023. Uh, it is Des Moines. Um, it's in uh, Hy-Vee Hall, uh, the, the sort of uh, convention complex there uh, associated with Wells Fargo uh, Arena. Um, tickets are going to be available soon. Uh, We're talking November 3rd. Yeah. Yes. So tickets will be available. Be available so tickets are available at, now. Yes. Yes. Where at? Uh, Nakade.com, right? Na- no. <laughs> Nakade.com will, will actually uh, route you to the Facebook page, and there will be uh, information available there. Oh, I was joking. That's good. That's easy. Yeah. N a c a d e dot com dot com dot com not k c. Yes. Naked with a c. Uh, if you go to naked.com, that will in- route you to an entirely different sort of uh, Tanner, sort, of, sort of convention. Pull that one up on the TV, Tanner. Yes. <laughs> Let me get that logged in real quick. I'm going to have to delete that out of my work search computer. history. <laughs> uh, now, now we're going to go through, as soon as we leave here, everybody's going to be like, damn it, this thing sounds like naked.com. What did you do? <laughs> but you want something that's catchy and easy to remember, not like Farm for Profit with a four in the middle of it, so you always have to remind people that it's got a four in the middle of it. Right. We, we are the closed, clothed naked. Yes, we are open for guests. Yes. With clothes. Yes. Yes. It's clothing, a requirement. clothing will be mandatory at the show, yes. This is, this is January in Des Moines. Like, that's true. Yes. It's gonna, like I said, Stop pretend. Make sure it's warm you enough. Will, you, will be able to see, you will be able to see naked pipe, naked equipment, but you must wear clothes. That's right. <laughs> Look at this. We got the slogan already. We're going to have this all set up and ready to roll. So this is, I mean, like I said in my intro, it's a first of its kind. You guys mentioned that there was a... Maybe some regional shows or some other shows throughout the country, but this is like going to be the Super Bowl of tile, right? That's it is. Goal. It is. Uh, it's, it's really going to be the first show in the industry, by the industry, for the industry, um, with, with these kind of, um, you know, the, the auspicious uh, sort of people, not including ourselves, but, you know, with... with Pipe manufacturers and equipment manufacturers, and and really the the heavyweights directing the direction of the show, the education, um, and and putting it on for for the end users. Well, and it's not just tile. I mean, it's truly soil conservation and and subsoil water management. We have classes going on about edge of field practices. Um, you know, we're we're all the same age. 20 years ago, you drove by a farm, and that farm was somebody's showpiece. You know, you had buffer strips. You had 
headlands, you had footers, you had all these things that with the uh, margins and everybody's trying to push fence row to fence row par- farming, that is, um, we're going to talk about edge of field practices to reduce the nitrates. You know, this really is about conservation. Keep your nitrates on your farm. You know, uh, nitrates are expensive right now. Nitrogen's expensive. Yeah, very expensive. So if we can show you ways to reduce your nitrogen runoff by implementing some uh, practices that save you money, that we have classes that are going to show about government payback, about overall return, that's really what it's about. It's about truly turning into a professional conservationist versus a tubing installer, installer or a drainage contractor or all these things. It's really about getting back to our roots, getting back to that professionalism, getting back to all the things that we did 20 years ago without even thinking about that have kind of gone away. Um, you know, with this is, with the EPA, with everything else is, everybody's talking about a buzzword. Uh, look at the look at the lawsuits from the Des Moines Water Works to drainage districts a few years ago. Is with all this is what are these ways? What is the technology? What is the money we are spending to control all this to improve our ground? And these are the things that we're doing. We're just publicly showing all the things that we're doing to save the environment, to promote conservation, to do all these things. It is by no means just a tiling expo. It, it truly sounds like if you have any interest in land, <laughs> whether it, it's for everyone. Any affiliation. If you're a decision maker right, let's go through the list. any sense. Who, who, who would be? I mean, let's go. Obviously, the obvious farmers, tile contractors, maybe land investors. If, you're a, if, you are a, uh, if you're a county engineer. If you are, uh, I mean, just even drainage engineers, conservation, uh, NRCS, NRCS conservationists, farm uh, manager, farm managers, ag lenders. If you're an uh, county surveyors, just any educate. Yeah. I could see. I mean, like people ag from educator. Iowa State, yeah, yeah or, yeah. or yeah. Uh, ag ed we type people, s- students. And, and if 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 you are that do it yourselfer who has, you know, you you start out and you say, well, I'm I'm just going to do a little bit of my own. Um, but you're starting out, and and you you need to see, or or you should come and see, what is available, and and what the grander scheme of things, and and what the industry really is. Um, you should come as well. Yeah, yeah. The farmers farmers have a have a unique opportunity at this event to educate themselves on what their contractor is doing. They could come with their contractor, and their contractor can say, I use brand X, and I use equipment X for these reasons and i can they can sit there and they can demonstrate and show them physically without having to be in, out in the field but like this is this is why i have the relationship i have with these companies and 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 so farmers have a unique opportunity to uh to educate themselves on what their contractors doing well, and you guys are so. going to have multiple like you have a bunch of uh, different contractors that are going to be there right exactly normally as a farmer like yeah, the contractors are going to be involved in the in the panel discussions and education yeah. and th- in ways that will be really I mean, unique. There's normally, like, I think of in our area, there's like maybe one or two different people you think of when you think about tile, but now you have the opportunity to go and actually talk to several of them mm-hmm. that you did, might maybe didn't know it was 20 miles down the road. Yeah. Well, and you're gonna you're gonna hear and talk to contractors from all over the area. Not only all over is, the Midwest. Yeah, all yeah. over the Midwest yeah. um, with that is, is but if you're Not from, only the Midwest. I mean, it is called the North American right. Conservation yeah. Drainage Expo for a reason. I mean, naked. We, naked. Exactly. <laughs> we, we have invited, you know, uh, not only people from the Midwest, but, you know, uh, uh, all over the, the continent. Yeah. Well, one of the things that... Drainage ex- does exist north and south of the border as well. So one of the things that came about with this is that one of the originally starting blocks was is, um, you know, we all have contractors that we, we sell to, we call on, and one of the contractors that we all know um, that I was talking to, he, he said is, you know, I, I own all this expensive equipment. You know, I own a two-year-old trencher. I own all the specialized stuff to get the proper support for my uh, dual wall, for the radius, for the gravel. I own a commercial plow. But one of my biggest customers 
goes to the farm show and they go to the farm show and somebody says, oh, you don't need these guys. Take your planter tractor and buy this implement for me and you're good. I don't have anybody that promotes or talks about why I spend all this money. You know, what benefits we get from this? What is this? So we ha- there's a ton of really great smaller associations. Uh, Craig and Brad, and Brad are both involved with ADMC. Uh, there's land improvement contractors. There's all these other small associations. You have to pay to be a member. You have to do all these little things. And they're great associations. They're constantly, everybody's promoting them. But the contractors are looking at like, how do I take my customers to some place to educate them for why do we spend all this money? Why are we so precise? Why do we do these things? We need something so we can do this. And that was the original thought about how it was born. And then, you know, it's just grown from there. I mean, as we originally met, we sat around and had a few beers at a, at a sports bar and we were talking about it and we were even talking with you guys and why? Well, I don't know why you do this. I don't know what goes on this. I know you put pipe in the ground, the water comes out, my yield improves. Yep. Mm-hmm. But, you know, how many guys know about root zones? How many guys know about soil water holding capacities? How many guys really know about all the things that go into this that it's either lost knowledge, tribal knowledge, and now the knowledge is re- being redone in a format that everybody can trade on your cell phones for what's going on and how the improvements are? And it has spiraled from what that little bit idea into is, is to incorporating all this on a wide variety. We want the knowledge out there. We want the education out there because that is the only way that we can, uh, that is how we show how the industry is growing, how the industry is benefiting the world, actually. And you don't have to be an association member to come. This is open to the public. Anybody can walk in off the street. Obviously, they got to buy a ticket. Uh, but uh, you you are welcome. You you don't need to be any particular uh, association, any particular membership. No particular um, career field. No particular just... career field. It is it is. They open. can come just to see us. Exactly. As in this, everybody in this room. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you you can come to see uh you know you guys. You can come to see Jason. You can come to see Brad. I mean, Brad has a small but very rabid following out there. You can come see Tony Reed. It's it's not well. You can come see Tony Reed. Yeah, we're gonna man. I we'll can't cue that up in the Tony. intro. Yeah. yeah, that in the intro of this episode, that yeah, we share that Tony's coming. Tony's gonna be there. We're gonna have a great conversation with him. You know, he reached out to us and he was like, "Guys, I need to know more about tile because all these people are blowing my TikToks up and say I can't run tile here." So he wants to know more about it. That's why he's coming. <laughs> so somebody, right. but here's here's a, here's a fun thing. So uh, that's something we hear from time to time. We can't run tile here. We have a whole section on drainage myths because there's whole sections in the Midwest where you used to have these ideas. Well, you can't, you can't do drainage in my area. You can't do drainage in my area. Well, what are we doing? We're doing drainage in those areas. I, I like it's this. It's happening. I like this. Normally, we wrap up an episode by asking you what the best advice you've ever received is the question. I'm going to change it for this episode. Just one time. We're going to do it differently. I want to know what you're most excited to see at this conference, at what are you playing? You keep playing around the computer. It overheated. <laughs> oh, at the expo. I want to know what the, the most excited you're going to be to see, whether it's one of the breakout sessions, whether it's going to be a round table, whether it's going to be Tony Reed. I want to know. I want to go around the room, and uh, Craig hasn't said anything for a while, so he's the one that has to go first. But before I spawn that right on him, remember, this is January 17th to the 19th. It's in Des Moines, N-A-C-A-D-E.com will at least get you somewhere close to finding a ticket. There is a discount if you want to buy a ticket for all three days because there's no way you're going to be able to sit through all the educational opportunities in one day. Plus, have time to come see us down there as Farm for Profit. January 17th to the 19th, or there'll be a link on the Farm for Profit website to get you there, farmforprofit.com. Craig, I stalled as long as I professionally could. (laughs) What are you most excited to see among, amongst keeping up with all the technology that improves every year, I think the most exciting thing is to get to know what is available through government funding. What, you know, what is available for, to uh, finance the things that you want to do to your farm to improve it? And there's a huge opportunity with the bills 
that have went through this year uh, through this administration to take advantage of that. And we learned at the Farm Progress show that that funding has gone up by lots. I don't even know that. I, like, I don't even want to say that because it was huge. Yeah. Um, way, Le- way more than huge. double. Leaps and bounds. Yes. Okay. And that's for green energy, also conservation, soil, all that kind of stuff. So, And this is going to fall yeah. right into that. All right. What about you, Jason? So I'm most excited for the areas of North America that are just finding out about drainage. You talk about the Delta, the Gulf Coast, some of those areas, they've never done it. They're all we're fine that are just getting introduced to drainage, to water management, all the things that go along with it. Anybody from those areas, I really encourage to come up here because you're going to jump in a room full of people that have been doing this for 60 years. You know, the companies have been around, the technology has been around, the tribal knowledge has been around. So instead of, you know, crawling and easing through, like 20 years ago, a lot of areas tiled for convenience. And now with yield monitors, we're tiling for production. Mm -hmm. You can jump right in and have access to the same technology, the same people, the same knowledge that the center of this industry deals with every day. You can jump decades ahead in your knowledge. All you have to do is show up. And we really want to teach you. We really want to show because the better job we do as educators, the better job that we do as conservationists, the better job that our industry, uh, ag, conservation, everything puts out forward to the general public. And that's that's uh, the best thing you can do in life. I love it. Brad? Yeah, I was thinking about different education, things like that, uh, what, to, what to highlight. But I'm, I'm honestly, I'm more of a people person and a relationship person. So, so what kind of gets me going is, is when I get talking to people and I'm like, oh, well, you know this person, deal with this person and everything. And, and you start learning all the different connections and, and just how, how interconnected the ag industry is, how uh, just, yeah, that's just kind of exciting for me, like the, the different relationships you can have and you didn't realize you had. But then also within that, um, it, you know, it goes hand in hand with uh, a show of this nature and the, and the people that are going to show up for it is what you didn't expect to learn um, that's not on our program list. We have a, we have an incredibly impressive program list of education here. And then when we're going to learn things, though, from people walking around, people walking around that room that have 40 years' worth of experience in the drainage industry, uh, that know stories and they know information and, and just things about drainage that we never could have foreseen. And, and that's going to just basically take, you know, every time you have an opportunity to learn that kind of thing, you're going to use that to go go so much further, uh, in whether it's in your specific career or whether I can use that to help my customers or anything like that. So um, that always kind of excites me. Nice. I love it. And now the worst place to be when we ask one of these questions is the last spot because someone might have already taken your answers. So what about you, Justin? I, so it, I, I'm very excited about everything that everybody said before me. Um, but... And I know it sounds well, you like could just, you could just stop there. I could. Like, oh, I absolutely yeah. could. But that but, wouldn't be Justin. But, but honestly, <laughs> he's on the nose with that one. So the, the most exciting thing to me is we're doing something that's never been done before. Not only in the fact that we're doing the show, but we, we are bringing together, uh, I, I'll be a little verbose here. We're bringing together titans of this industry. Uh, and we're bringing them all together in a common goal. I mean, we are getting competitors to sit across the table from each other. We are establishing relationships that have never been uh, established before. And the thing that you can take away from that, if you get uh, equipment manufacturers that are all coming together in a common purpose in the same show, if you get pipe manufacturers that are coming together in a common purpose for this show, it is not only for the benefit of the industry, but it is for uh, really an indicator for all those people that are participating that they are after something bigger than their bottom dollar, that their line, that they are actually trying to move all this forward. They are trying to, um, you know, make a difference in not only their contractors' lives, but, uh, you know, the, the, the people who are seeing the end user result of this, uh, the farms, the nitrate reduction, the conservation. You are really seeing their effort and their dedication to the business as a whole uh, and all of the things that we can aspire to uh, above and beyond profit, above and beyond uh, the bottom dollar to to show that they really do have a vested interest in their people and the future and this business and 
all of the rest of it. And it sounds a little hokey, but it really does, you know, speak to the people that have, have pushed forward for this, that they really want to do something above and beyond uh, just make a buck. Yeah, I like this. Corey, I'm going to take it. I want to answer the question to you. Yeah, so. I was going to say, what about you, Tanner? One of our, the two of our most downloaded profit shows were around tile. And I don't feel like we explored the topic of drainage tile and the benefits that it provides to agriculture as in-depth as we wanted to. And this is an environment to where we are going to be able to capture content because we're going to be down there. And we're going to have the, the ability to listen in these breakout sessions and do these roundtable discussions and have, have a lot of insight gained that we can then share with our audience. So to me, I'm just excited to be down there, period. It's fun that we get to be a part of this and help promote it. But ultimately, for you as a listener, if you can't make it, we're going to have some of that information to share right back with you. What about you, Corey? I'm excited because we've been talking to these guys for a while, and I know they put a lot of work in long before that. And I'm ready to see them grab it by the balls and, you know, put it, put it down and, and just get it done. Because it is, you know, from putting on a conference mm-hmm. that starting something like this is truly so organic and difficult. And I'm ready to watch you guys blaze the trail. So, and we know that there'll be uh, some growing pains in the beginning, but... Man, how awesome is it going to be when we look three, four years down the road and we look back and be like, that's the best show. Well, the best part is going to have you guys with us the whole time. Like, I, I the was, best part? Really? The best part? I wasn't aware we could say balls. Can I go back and change a couple of things? I thought I was going to get bleeped. <laughs> he doesn't know if he's getting bleeped. Uh, that's up to uh, our yeah, editor. There you go. <laughs> well, this has been a pleasure, guys. We, we spent quite a bit of time together. We're getting to know you guys, get your personalities. It's fun to get the backstories. We hope our listeners enjoyed the show. Justin, Brad, Jason, Craig, thank you for coming here to Central Iowa, sitting in studio. It's always fun to have people here. It's been great. Thank, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you nice for Nice to be us. live yes. with people instead yes. of on Zoom. Yes, yes, that's right. Corey, but for the show, what do you say? It's a crack of Bush Light. Thank you, Bush Light, for sponsoring us. You deserve it. <laughs>